Hi, this is Dr. Brandon Champ from Algoma University, and today I'm going to give instruction on how to create a bar plot in Microsoft Excel using Excel's graphing functions. So what I'm going to do is produce a bar plot with three bars, one for low disturbance, one for medium disturbance, and one for high disturbance. Uh, and the height of the bar will represent the mean. And then I'm going to put some error bars in to give a sense of the variation uh, in diversity in each of these treatments. So that's what these are means of the, the diversity in these treatments. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is select the headings and the mean data in the way that I'm showing. Then I'm going to go to Insert, go to Column Graph, and select the clustered column and it's as easy as that to get started. Now there's a lot of different things you can do with this graph. Uh, first of all, I, I'm going to get rid of this because it doesn't provide me with much information. That changes the size of the graph. I'm going to get rid of these lines by selecting them and deleting them. And then I'm going to click on the actual bars to give some changes that I want to see. So in this case I'm going to reduce the gap size between the bars. Right, so that effectively makes the bars bigger. And then I'm going to go to fill color and select solid fill and then I'm gonna go with a nice gray why not it's a little bit more professional you can go with gray or black or you can go with uh, if you wanna add a splash of color that gives you the option to do so the next thing I want to do is you can see that there's no uh, Y axis label so if you go up to layout one of the options is axis titles and if you select vertical axis, uh, a rotated title is what I'm going to use. So that will be the word or the words on their side beside the Y axis. So in this case, I'm going to select these values. Shannon Weiner Diversity. Okay. Then you can select that and, and you can change the, the characteristics of it. So in this case, I'll, I'll set it to 12. Um, that gives you a different size. I'll go back to layout, chart axis, primary horizontal axis, and I'll type in disturbance treatment. And again, I can select that and go back and change the formatting to be whatever I want. All right, now all that really remains for my graph here is to put the error bars on. And again, if you go to layout, you can see there's an actual error bar selection here. And if I select that, I can select more error bar options. And from that, I have a variety of things. I can have both directional error bars, minus directional error bars, or plus uh, directional error bars. Since the error is the same, positive or negative, I'm going to uh, just choose one, um, and I'll just choose the plus, so it'll extend above the bar. All right? Uh, I don't want it to be a fixed value. I want it to be a custom value that I've calculated. All right? So I can specify the value. And in doing so, basically, I want the positive error value, so I, I click on this uh, which basically specifies that I'm going to point to the right data to use. Right? And then I select the data I want and click OK. And what this uh, will do actually, if you take a look, is it will create the errors for the graph that you want. Uh, and that, that about does, does it for that. Now the only other thing I would say that you'd want to try is now if you want to save this out there's no really good export function in Excel to save this out as a picture but you can export this graph as a PDF which you can then chop up and, and put in any kind of a document uh, the way to do that is to click on the graph hold down shift go to file save as select PDF where is it right down here okay and I'll call it graph one and then if you hopefully you've got a PDF program that's writing and you can see that that uh, this is my, my PDF graph and I can inc include that in any lab report or whatever that I want okay so that gives you a sense that uh, the mean level of, of diversity in the low treatment uh, low disturbance treatment is is slightly lower than in the medium disturbance and then it's also lower in the higher disturbance although slightly higher than in the low disturbance, although we haven't assessed any kind of statistical differences between these treatments at this time. All right, and that's how you make a bar plot using Microsoft Excel. Thanks.